Welcome, everyone, and thank you for listening to the Higher Calling Podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, and this is your source for all things hiring, staffing, and recruiting. I'm joined today by Patrick Sermeyer, who's been a friend of mine for a number of years now. Patrick has been in staffing for quite a while. He's owned two companies, and he's currently president of Luxus, who is a very successful organization that Patrick is running in a very different way right now, which is why I, I begged him to come on and talk about it. So Patrick, it's great to see you. Thanks, man. I, uh, I'm, I went from being a podcast rookie, I think since I've been on this trip here for the last seven and a half months of, uh, I've been on a few different podcasts telling my story. So I'm, I'm excited to, to chat with you and catch up. I know we had a great conversation leading up to it, but yeah, my, uh, my uh, current situation where I'm at, although I live in Orlando, I'm right now in Santa Barbara, California, and uh, our family left, we left Orlando in June to do a one year, call it travel and work remote all around North America. So uh, this, I think I told you, this is like my 20th location that I've been to since June of uh, 2021. And we've got nine more locations left before we end up trekking back home. So it's myself, my wife, my two kids, my two dogs, uh, SUV and a trailer behind us. So. so I've been following on social media, which is why I really wanted you to come on because you're, you're, you're doing something that I, I'll tell you, I wanted to do badly. I know I shared that with you previously when you first yeah. mentioned that you were thinking about doing it. Um, and I missed my window. Once you, once kids are in high school, it becomes increasingly yeah. difficult to, to do something like that. And they're not as, um, as interested probably in leaving, oh. leaving their friends. So you did it at the, at the perfect time. Um, what, what led to the decision? Let, let's just start with that. Cause I really want to you know, talk a, a lot about how you're running a business from the road because, um, you know, that is its own, its own thing for sure. But what, what led to the decision to do it in the first place? Yeah, well, it wasn't it wasn't a short one. In fact, we took nine months to even prepare for the trip, um, just working out logistics because it's um, our kids are five and eight. And, you know, uh, my son, Carson, hasn't yet started public school. My daughter, Vivian, was going to be in second grade. So you can imagine she's currently we're homeschooling her for this year, which is already a challenge in itself. Or I'd say we're not the best teachers, but we, we get the job done. Um, but before before you know COVID 2020 say call it march 2020 we had actually converted our business to be a fully remote business seven months prior that was a huge learning curve in itself I, i've always been in an office we had a large like 4,000 square foot office and just like every traditional staffing business would do we converted remote um i had felt the itch to do it for a while especially with all these like um hybrid kind of work offices like we work in other places sure. and um i learned a big lesson i learned that i didn't have the right staff for remote work uh, in fact we actually lost a lot of staff people just didn't like it um you can imagine some folks they don't enjoy working from home they want to go to an office and uh that was a kind of rebuild for us and we did that and then we had to kind of figure out what's our model where we go from here so as we're kind of getting our momentum back again of course now we have COVID 2020 that was uh you know for some people that was the accelerator for their their business for mine it really put us in a standstill we were servicing industries that um that just took a big hit you know and you know, as you know, we've done some collaborative projects with your company as well, and we're thankful for that. We're thankful to have those relationships. But um, right now, I think anyone who's in staffing is probably seeing, if you're not seeing the success of it, you're at least seeing a lot of requisitions come through. I'll say that, you know, because there's there are a lot of people hiring. And so um, when we were sitting in 2020, we just loved it. We love to travel. Like, I mean, we, we probably would take two or three trips a year, either somewhere in Europe or somewhere with our family. And um, we couldn't do that. And so we started figuring out, well, if we're working remote, the kids are young, why don't we try something that we just go across the country? And it started as a three-month trip for the summer. Then I thought, well, I really would need six months. Well, then I realized no one really wants to rent my homes for six months because I put my homes up for rent in Orlando. Um, and then I said, you know what, we're going to go one year. This is a big plan. We started mapping out every location on a Google Maps, dropping pins. We started figuring out how long does it take to drive to each place. We started figuring out logistics of, you know, what do we got to do? I mean, you can imagine we went from two cars, sold one car down to one. Uh, now we're a one car family just going across the country. And uh, it's like everything else. It's an adventure. So I'd say 80 percent of what we planned, perfect and 20 percent. We could not have planned for. I mean, it's eighty percent is pretty pretty darn good. I mean, you're you, you're Clark Griswold times you know fifty <laughs> with the time you're on the road, and and really, yeah, you know, I've traveled quite a bit with my family, 
over time and something goes wrong seemingly within 15 minutes of leaving the house every yeah. time, every time we go somewhere. Um, so with that, with that said, what, what's been the biggest surprise so far? I mean, you did a lot of planning, but still you can't, you don't know what to expect when you we step out on an adventure like this. Well, I mean, the biggest surprise I think comes down to, in my opinion, it, it's, uh, you don't know what it's like, it's like spending 24 seven with your family. Most people just don't, they're not doing that. You know, everyone's going off to a job. They're going to school. You're going to get some time together, maybe some sports or activities. You know, most families would say, if we can get dinner together, that'd be an amazing. Well, I now have 24 seven for a whole year. And, um, and at my kid's age, you know, they miss their friends. Um, you know, we're having to be super creative and, but the best part is, is that, you know, we've got a lot of adventures that you mentioned our YouTube page. We've been documenting as much as we can. We, we were a little behind during the holidays. So we're going to put out about four more videos in the next two weeks and then uh, go from there. But um, I think mostly I, the thing I'm most excited about, even though it was a surprise was, you know, this digital memory we're creating on YouTube, we'll all go back and we'll watch these as kind of like the new age, um, you know, picture book that you used to have as a kid. And, and that's what we're going to do. But you know, I, I'd say ultimately my, my, my biggest struggle right now is I'm up at like five in the morning working uh, East Coast hours trying to help run our run our team. Um, the good thing is I'm off early, but, you know, it's an it's an early start for me. I'll say that. So. Yeah. So you're doing something that a lot of people talk about. Very few will, will actually take the step and do and do my, myself included. And one of the challenges that, that always comes up, you know, the kids and the social aspect of it is one thing, but in the financial of it is yet something else altogether, but you still have a business to run. So you, you, you were running a successful business right after COVID. And, and since we talked a lot during that time, things changed a lot. Mm -hmm. And so it would have been easy to stay home and it just focus on that. So you, 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 you took the step and said, let's make it even more complex than it already is. Um, yeah. but you're doing it. So what, what's the secret to that? Because most, many, many people would, would want, would want to know. Well, I'm going to say that the secret is, are some things that I wasn't really strong at to start. And I've got some good people around me. Um, I'll give some reference to our director of operations, Joy Fullerton. She's, she does, is the glue to our business in the sense that like, we had to realize that in a remote environment, Okay, which doesn't have the same structure. And most people I know that work in a sales or staffing environment, they want to eyeball their people, um, call it micromanage if that's the word you want to use. But you know, you want to be able to, you know, keep people on pace. And I think the transition that I had to make was going from a, and I'll give you an example, a, hey, we work 40 hours a week to, well, no, no, we're production related. Like we've got we've got clients that need an end result that want to hire and need our consulting advice through that process. And we've got to do a certain amount of work to help get that outcome for them. And so now we started structuring our business into, hey, here's what we need to do daily. Here's how we go about it. Here's what's most important, reprioritizing those things. And then empowering everybody to just know that that's, um, you know, that's, that's top, top of mind instead of just looking at activity or how many hours I sit at the desk. Um, I ran a poll on LinkedIn uh, just last week. I had like 200 plus people run, uh, take the poll. They said that they have felt that since they've been working for home, it's a 50-50 split that most people believe that everyone says they're more productive and some people say they're working more hours. No okay. one's working less, which is unique. I thought for sure we were working less. They said, no, everyone's working more no hours. No one's going to admit that on your poll anyway. Yeah, right? I guess I not. Case, I figured that too. Back to them. So we're going to we're gonna try out in the summertime, actually, uh, Friday's off or every other Friday off and see if we can make that work. Uh, I know it's been a big push for everyone to do that and we'll see what what hybrid format we can do with it. But for me, it was letting go of control. I'm like most people, I'm just like a control freak. I, I want to know what we're doing and when we're doing it. And I don't want any surprises like, you know, most owners are. And uh, this caused me to have to have a lot of faith, but have faith in everyone going, hey, you've got the plan. Let's work the plan and let's be okay with the outcome. You know what I mean? We're, we're, we're faithful that the outcome will be what it is. We can only plan the actions, the attitude part. And I think it's taken us, you know, seven months to get that mentality in there. Um, I think I told you I hired an outside coach, um, sales coach that's really been helpful. Um, I'll give I'll give a shout out to him, Casey Jaycox, but he's a great guy who's been impactful for me and our and all of our reps as well. So, so is it is it fair to say that you probably wouldn't have been able to take the step had you not already gone virtual prior to COVID and and be yeah. headed in that direction? I 100 percent believe so. I, I think. I think the COVID situation was such a band-aid ripoff. 
all of us probably should have explored some hybrid work option, uh, work from home options, but no one wanted to. It just, it's either it's the way we always did it, or like in my case, as a, as a manager who wants to maybe micromanage in some cases, like you go, that doesn't work for me. I can't tell you people say it doesn't work for me. There's companies I talk to now that say we can't wait to go back in the office. And I'm thinking like, I think it's the wrong move. I'm not saying you have to go full remote, but a hybrid for sure and adapting to those things, I think is the right play right now. And um, not everyone has done it. So. Yeah, it's it, it's a it's an interesting time because it, it's becoming a competitive advantage in hiring and retention or disadvantage, depending on how you're approaching it. There's going to be winners and losers from this. Uh, and, and the hybrid approach in particular, I find um, I struggle with because if you one of the benefits of being remote is is your your workforce can live anywhere like you're doing yeah. right now. Uh, right. But that that hybrid deal of, of your your virtual, but you still have to come in two days a week. I, I, yeah, that's right. I, I, I'm struggling with that one a little bit because I'm not sure who wins in, in that scenario. Um, I, well, I, you know, you referenced to me uh, earlier, we were talking that, you know, you're a big fan of the gig economy and so am I. And, and this is kind of a little bit of a movement in that direction. Um, I mean, we our employees are full time employees for us and, and with benefits and all things that go with it. But I kind of view it a little bit of like the gig economy and that, you know, I've, everyone kind of almost has a project that they're responsible for. They're responsible for the activity and the outcome of that project. And we believe that project will get the result we want for our clients. Um, and that's kind of the thing we've had to do. We've had to take the job descriptions of internal employees and refine them as to like, here's where you'd spend 20% of your effort in your day will be in this and 15% doing this. We didn't used to do that in a breakdown of our job responsibilities. But as you and I mentioned before, through the idea of um, smart contracts is that, you know, in essence, it, it's causing all of us to be a little more specific about defining what we need, why we need it, when we need it, um, instead of just being more general. And I think that's what being in an office kind of made us lazy about, which was like, well, we're here for eight to 10 hours a day. Let's do as much as we can do. But it's like, Maybe we didn't need eight to 10 hours. We could have done it in five or six. You know? There's a lot of waste, uh, right? From, a lot of waste. From, from your commute to getting dressed in a certain way if you don't have to. And yeah. if you start chopping all those things down, you really are left with a, a relative few you know, number yeah. of productive hours that are necessary to operate at the same level. Now, now the hope yeah. would be you can apply those, you know, still work the same uh, amount of time and then and then be much more productive or you get the time back for um, to enjoy life a little more, which is really the the, the whole point. I agree, man. It's so. Um... So one of the things that, that I struggle with when I travel because I I, I think about this every summer uh, of just you know, going to the beach, staying at a house for for a month. Yeah. But I find when I am not in work mode, I quickly shut off and and have a difficult <laughs> yeah. time operating at the same level. And yeah. even when I come back from vacation, it takes me a couple of days to to get back. And I think that there's, that's probably a healthy thing to do from, from a vacation standpoint, but yeah. have you, has that been a struggle for you at all to go from work to play mode you know, almost every day having to switch back and forth? Um, it was, I, I think it's like training a muscle. Um, now, now I completely understand, like I've got a defined, I do have a defined number of like either responsibilities that I've chosen my day. I mean, a point being is if, if anyone who can take the time to plan their day, know what their priority meetings are, their priority responsibilities, and then put a hard cutoff, like we all say we want to do, but I've had to be forced to do it. Um, you can you can ha handle both. But, you know, mostly it's around 1, 1.30 in the afternoon. We're out adventuring as a family and seeing some great things, plus the weekends. Um, so it gives us the time we need. But um, that morning time, like I'm very dedicated to the work I'm doing. And some days I take a day off. But yeah, it was when we started, it was a struggle. Um, you know, I've got, I'm thinking about my little setup, but like now I know, what's the perfect setup for me at work? Um, you know, we rent a place to stay in. I'm looking for at least a, a nook or somewhere I can work out of. And um, I think anyone who were to start it would probably find it to be difficult, just like vacation mode. But once you get in the groove, it, you know, works itself out. I, I think more than anything, it, it gave me some mental discipline that I needed. You know? Well, clearly you had that, a lot of that coming in. You've, you've, yeah. you, you've, you've run a number of companies. We're only talking about the staffing companies today, yeah. of which you, you, you've, you've had two successful organizations. But I know you've, you have, a, have other businesses uh, that you run too. So that discipline is already, is already in place. But what, what do you think has been the biggest challenge for you in terms of, of adapting to the, the, big, the big shift as, as it relates to work in particular? The, the family and social stuff is, is, you know, is uh, 
you've probably encountered your own set of challenges there too. Yeah. But um, the, the, oh, and work with work specifically, what's been, what's been the hardest part? Um, the challenge for me is just something that was going to exist, whether I was working remote or not. And that's patience. And, and what I mean by patience is, um, you know, we're in a service business and training someone up to do things to level that you want them done. Um, I'm, I'm coming to be okay with the idea that if someone can do something to 80% of the level that I, believed in my own head it should be done that's still pretty good um you know and there's some key components that are like these are must we must do this and and maybe if you don't do it exactly this way i'm okay with it but uh my my desire of perfectionism or my desire of like being in control and not having the patience is probably the biggest growth i've had to have um i referenced casey earlier but you know i was the kind of manager who i'm gonna tell you what to do you know hey here's how we're doing it this is how we do things i've had to really work and i'm i, I would say i'm good at it now um, for sure, which is I'm going to ask enough questions to help someone see the end result and help them kind of have their own collective idea so that that brain wrinkle kind of works for them as we make that plan. But once again, it takes patience. And I bet my entire life that will be a component of how I operate that I'm going to have to keep working on. I don't believe it's ever going to turn to an automatic, hey, we got this. But um, for me, that's my biggest growth and probably my biggest struggle all the time. So. I think you and I share that in common yeah. because I I know consciously that uh, when when helping someone you know, lead them to the answer, guide them to to the you know, uh, to the point where they can you know, come up with the the problem solving with you know, themselves, right? I mean, everyone wins when you do that. Yeah. But being a business owner and knowing you know, from the time I started you know, my company 16 years ago, I, I would always been an employee and I always had someone else to uh, defer to it, yeah. it, you know, it would, at some level. There was always a backboard. And then when you don't have one, you have to adapt really quickly to yeah. having the buck stop with you and That's to so make true. decisions on the fly, no hesitation and no looking back. And I have found over the years, and I think this is probably what you're describing too, that unintentionally, if I if I'm presented with a problem, I'm just giving you the answer and moving right. on to the next thing, and 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 that is not ideal, and it's not good for development of everyone else around you. It's true. It's uh, any any good coach would 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 say that you know you've got to help lead someone to find the answer themselves through your your guidance, but that's a longer road. You know what I mean? I, sometimes when you're putting out fires, which I know a lot of small business owners like myself are doing, you wear five, seven hats, you're putting out fires, you kind of judge your day, not by this, the progression you made, but how many fires you had to put out. And if there's only a couple, you're like, that's a good day. Um, I've had days like that, you know, and that's where my impatience comes from having this. Um, and uniquely enough, having this remote work where there's this veil almost where someone can't just come knock on your door. They can't just like walk up to your desk that is causing all of us, including myself, that when there's a problem, sometimes they work themselves out. That happens when you just give it time. And then sometimes you find the answer on your own by researching and thinking and coming up with strategies without having to always go to who you think the source is. And, and believe it or not, that's probably one of the biggest benefits of remote work has been, you know, someone can virtually knock on my door through a, a Zoom call and I just virtually don't answer. You know, so, so. <laughs> well, it, it, it takes a, a different level of effort now that, than, than it did previously, where you could just walk by, you know, an open door and stick your head yeah. in and say, "Hey, let's talk about you know, this." And and to some degree, I think we lose uh, something by not being able to do that. I, I it, sure. every conversation now has to be planned, and our new employees, in, in some cases, I haven't even had one-on-one -on -one conversations with them mm -hmm. where. I don't get to ask them about their weekend or, or just yeah. see them in the hallway or the elevator. Um, and, and so we do lose something, but I think what we gain is the need, like you're saying, to really consider whether that call is necessary. Do I really need to ask for help or can I go and, and do this on my own? And I think perhaps a, a, um, a, a positive byproduct of COVID and what it's brought to us is the for, is it's forced sort of um, you know, autonomy uh, in a good way. Uh, on yeah, people. I would agree. I mean, it's, it's interesting. I don't, I don't have any data on this. This is just more theory. I could probably run some reports to find out, but like when you consider um, people talking about the loss of um, the, the collaboration, live collaboration, you go, okay, that, that's a real loss with this remote work. And I, I believe in that. Um, and then you think of like just any issues 
that uh, we'll call them HR related issues that might come up with internal employees. And there's a lot of them, I won't get into the details. Anyone who's owned a business knows what they could be. If you put that in a weighted scale, I'm gonna say that the amount of collaboration work does not outweigh the amount of like issues you may have had from working in an office. And I'm, I'm just me, one person's opinion. I'm a believer that the scales are tipped the other direction. So yeah, I'm with you. The benefits definitely outweigh, outweigh the negatives for, for everyone's everyone individually and the way they get yeah. to live their life. I mean, it's improved um, the way we get to spend our time and yeah. you're, you're now you're taking that to an extreme right now, yeah. uh, which is great. So what advice would you have, would you give to someone who's thinking about doing it? And, and I just know there's so many people out there um, that, that want to take that step, but are afraid for various reasons. And I think just the unknown, right? It's not what we do. Um, but you've been the trailblazer. So what advice would you give both from a family standpoint as well, or planning, whatever you want to, um, however you want to answer that, but also from yeah. a professional standpoint? Well, the first thing I would say is anyone uh, in our industry or just in business, I think your first decision you have to make is, do you want to be a solopreneur or scale a business? Uh, I asked a friend of mine who just started a staffing business last year. And I said, which one do you want to do? He goes, I don't know. I said, I think you should define that really well first. I said, yeah. because you can do well for yourself in either direction. And most people think scaling a business is the only way to go. I said, it's not always not always the best. And it's not always the right move for you in your life. Um, so I'd say first, make that decision. Stick with your plan. You can always change it. Next thing I would say is then start like, you know, asking other people like myself and just through their trials and tribulations. And then start, you mostly have to just start defining your roles more specifically because you just can't change on the fly as much as you do. Uh, one of the things I've seen that most people discuss is an issue with remote work is, yeah, we don't have as many like live meetings we did in the office, but um, interrupted video calls or scheduled meetings because um, they, there's old managers who can't deal with the idea of I'm not seeing my people. So they're over scheduling too many meetings. And now they're just looking at them virtually. They think because they keep them at bay for an hour that that was productive and it wasn't. Um, and I actually just last week, I, I've been reevaluating constantly how many meetings do we have? What's the purpose of each one? How long is each one? Can we, and I combined a couple and I, I actually took a whole hour of meetings out of our week um, starting this week. Oh, but that was just, nice. that was just me being conscious of it because I just realized that everyone wants to be more productive. So I would say those are the things to start with from a family perspective, something I wasn't good at, but I've gotten better. My wife is amazing is, is just setting really good boundaries. There's a book called boundaries, but you know, you could define boundaries as to like, Hey, I'm going to stop at this time. It's a hard stop. Um, you know, I used to say this phrase of, Hey, you know, give me a call. I'm available if you need me. And my wife would say, why do you say that you, you literally are making a hard stop where you don't plan to work anymore, but you've gotten in the habit of just saying the statement. Right. And she's like, you should say the statement of, Hey, I'm done for the day. If you wanted to reach me, we should have done it in this window. And we should have scheduled some meetings because we've got some planned events, but you know, these a la carte calls constantly all the time are cutting into my defined family time. And I, I'm now practicing the habit of, of just saying, Hey, I'll be done at this time. I won't be available anymore, but we can call tomorrow if we need to. So. Now yeah, that's a, that's an interesting thing. And I, and something, you know, I, I, I like to say I'm never off. You know, I go in to get my hair cut. Uh, yeah, and, and it's right. always the same thing. I laugh. I don't know why this particular experience is, is one that I think of, but they always say, if I go in on Friday afternoon, so are you working today or are you off today? And I laugh and think, I haven't been off in 16 years because yeah. I really do feel that way. And um, I have not gone to that place. You mm. say you're going to that place. Can you really do that? How, are you doing that? Because it's easier um, said than done. Well, the reason why I know I'm, I'm conscious about it, first of all, and going that place is I, I had a um, really like, deep thought a couple weeks ago and I talked to my wife about it, which was, you know, I want to be a good example for my children. You know, I want them to grow up and learn some of the core characteristics that I think are important to become called a functional adult of someone who's respectable and, and all the characteristics and character traits that you probably want your children to have to of being good for the word and learning work ethic and, and understanding how to work through adversity. And I said to her, I said, well, they're only five and eight, which I understand they're young. I said, but when I asked them, what do you think I do? Well, to them, I type and I talk to people <laughs> through a video. Like they don't like, 
like they don't see, I mean, if, if you're a professional athlete, you see your dad, it has to work hard to train or your mom has to work hard and train for a sport. They play the sport. You get to see loss. You get to see win. It's all on the public scale. But like, from my perspective, I'm like, I, I don't see that. You know what I mean? And so I'm having to get conscious of like discussing like, oh, here's a difficult time I had today. And that's a lesson I learned and kind of being vulnerable with my kids or, you know, cutting it off and then telling them, say, I'm not going to work anymore today because today, here's what I did. I helped these people do this, this, and this. And I'm actually being like conscious to describe to them what I did today and why I did it. And then what I'm spending my time doing now. Um, and I told my wife, I said, when I get home, I'm, I'm going to, I don't know, I'm going to sign up for something that my kids can physically see me do and train for or work towards so they can see my struggles and I can communicate with them like what I've had to do to accomplish that. I, a friend of mine and I are going to sign up for, um, you ever heard of the dopey challenge they do at Disney? It's like yes. a four day race, yes. 5k, yes. 10k, half marathon, full marathon. Like yes. that's, that will be uh, the most challenging thing I've done probably physically in my life. And that that's what I'm going to end up doing. And now I've got to be conscious because otherwise they're just like, well, dad talks to a camera and he types on the computer, you know? So, <laughs> well, I know, I know you run because I see, I see your, your posts on that. I used yeah. to run and I, I did goofy, the goofy challenge one year. So I did the, okay, awesome. the half marathon and the marathon back to back. But to your point that that's been, I think it's been 10 years since I've run a, a marathon and my kids don't, don't see that my oldest was 12 at the time yeah. and so she has some vague recollection of going to races and events and that sort of thing but my younger ones they don't and and they to your point they've not seen that side of me and no. i i think you know they, they see the pictures they don't believe it they're like sure old guy you know <laughs> that, that you, you 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 were in shape at one point but mm -hmm. good for you for for doing that and i hope you um you stick with it even when you come back to reality so to speak right because this has to feel like vacation even though you're working it, yeah it, it has to be surreal because you're, you're, you're not home <laughs> it, it does feel like vacation some days um other days it, it can be a struggle um you know there are days we've had some moments where we're like we're going home forget it we're, we're done with this and it just it could just be a day where everyone usually when we get to a new place and everyone's trying to kind of get, get their footing as to like okay where are we and the space we're staying in and you know we're on top of each other it takes a little while um but then we start to have some really great moments um and some of these adventures we're doing you know where we're you know walking through some glaciers or you know some amazing places it's um you know we have to stop we have to be more conscious of like hey what are we doing and and what's happening here and then we're having to explain to our kids that like look you can you can grow up and do this if you like it's just that you have to make plans to be able to do that for yourself and i hope that what they take away from it is they have choices you know what i mean and they, their choices are theirs and they have to live with the consequences but they also get the benefit of it too so. Well, I, I, I love what you're doing as a professional. I love what you're doing uh, as, as, a, as a parent, too, because you're showing your kids and something that I think is, is not done nearly enough and, and something that I've tried to do, not, not to the degree you are in this um, situation, but to show my kids that life is not about following a chosen path, a path that's chosen for you. It, yeah. it, it's, it's about, you know, maximizing your experiences along the way. And you are practicing what you preach with that. So I, I just, I'm, I'm excited for you. I'm excited for your kids because they're, they're getting to experience something that very, very few will, and they will forever be better for it. I, 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 I truly believe that. And I'm sure you, you realize that too. Yeah, man, it's been great. Um, you know, I, I referenced, Casey Jaycox, who I'd hired, he's been a, a big impact as someone I've gotten to become a friend with and is a coach in my life. But he he sent me this book two weeks ago. I'm in the middle of reading it now. It's, it's called It Takes What It Takes uh, by a guy named Trevor Moab. Um, if I didn't even know who Trevor was, but unfortunately he was young. He was 48, but he passed away this past summer. But he was the oh, wow. uh, mental performance coach for Florida State, University of Georgia, Russell Wilson, all, Michael Johnson, the, um, the uh, track athlete. I mean, but this has been an amazing book of just referencing that, you know, when you set a goal, your choices become limited. Um, but a lot, his whole theory here is like neutral thinking. And it's basically taking away this big highs and dips, which is, you know, he, he believes that when you have your car and it's in reverse, it's going backwards. You can't just throw it and drive. You got to hit it in neutral first, you know, before you can get it into drive or else you're going to have some issues. Well, the same thing goes if he believes in practicing neutral thinking, because, Negative thinking for sure doesn't work. And not everyone can believe in positive thinking because that takes a long time to get your mind there. And right. um, I've been adapting to some of these things and, and it's it's been really helpful for us on this trip.
So. Interesting. Well, yeah. you, you, you've learned a lot. You're doing a lot, and, uh, and and you're and you're making it work. And I think it's just a um, such a positive story for for others to hear. And hopefully, more people will do what you've done because you're you're proving that it's that, that it's possible. Um, and and not even a stretch. I think, right? I mean, it's you, you once you made the commitment to do it, you never looked back. I mean, the only thing I say is I keep my hair short because I got a lot more gray hairs now than I did seven months ago. So, um, but that's, that's the only negative thing I could think about this trip has given me, but otherwise, um, yeah, it's been a fun time. So, well, well, listen, I will let you get back to it because I know the kids are probably looking, looking at you going, Hey, let, let's go do something fun. So what's on the agenda for today? Oh, man today. Well, one part of every agenda of every day is taking them to a park to get the energy out. Okay. Um, and then, uh, <laughs> Since we're staying in Santa Barbara and we're kind of just getting towards Southern California, there's a lot of beautiful uh, areas of the coastline. And, you know, we love the beach in Florida, but the beaches here are just as beautiful. So uh, we're planning to probably go to the beach and uh, spend some time there, which would be a great, a great afternoon. Awesome. Awesome. Well, listen, I will, I will put um, you know, the Luxus information on, uh, on the show notes. But if someone wants to follow your journeys, tell, what, how, do they, how do they find you on YouTube? Yeah, thanks for, for asking. Um, so we have a YouTube page, which is called The Sentient Life, which is S-E-N-T-I-E-N-T. -E -E sentient is a, I didn't know the word, we had to come up with it, but it it's a person who has the ability to sense and feel. And we thought that kind of was indicative of like what we're attempting to do, which is our tagline is uh, disconnecting to find awareness, but you can find us in The Sentient Life. Our website is thesentient.life. And uh, I think we've got about 28 videos total and um, surely about 10 or 15 more to come. Awesome. Well, we'll put that in the show notes as well. So Patrick, thank you so much for taking the time today. It's been a real pleasure and I look forward to continuing to follow over the next few months. Thanks, Pete. Appreciate it.